Morning. Morning. Thanks for joining me for a first in the morning session. I know those are tough to get to, so I appreciate your attendance. I've got 830. I've got a lot to get through, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Adam Carnow. Uh, I work for Esri. I work with local governments in Florida. Um, uh, I've been practicing GIS for over 20 years. I've worked in the public sector, the private sector, and academia. So um, I created this presentation based on my work and what I'm seeing happening with my customers. And it, it was a response to that to try to help people understand um, where I, I think we've got some work to do as GIS professionals. Um, it's gotten really good reviews as I've given it all over the country. Um, and it's really been motivating. So I, I hope you guys appreciate uh, the message, what I'm here to talk about today. And it is the underutilization of GIS and how to cure it. You know, GIS um, makes maps. And usually when people hear GIS that are not GIS professionals, they think MAP, right? Those are the folks that make the maps. And no matter what technology we have, people still use maps like this today, right? So you print a map out or you send it to them in PDF or JPEG and they print it out and then they mark it up with, with uh, markers and so forth. So we've got a lot of work to do as far as getting people to understand um, the full capabilities of what GIS can do. And I came up with this analogy to try to get people to understand um, all the different things that GIS can do and the value it can bring. And if you think of GIS as a Swiss army knife, it can do all kinds of different things, right? But if all you do with it is make maps, it's like buying this expensive Swiss Army knife and using number 12, the toothpick, right? So your job is to learn to use all those other tools and blades on the knife and then show people in your organization um, what they can do. And so they come to you and don't just ask for maps. They ask for other things that GIS can do with it. Now, how many people have, hear, have heard of BI or business intelligence, right? Okay, well, this is a big growing um, growing movement in IT across all organizations, private and public, and academia, and it's basically using techni techniques and tools to transform raw data into meaningful and useful information for business analysis purposes. You may have also heard the term data-driven, where we're gonna be data-driven and we're gonna make decisions based on data, not because that's the way our gut feels or because we've always done it that way, right? So there's a big movement to implement BI solutions across the world, and again, in all industries, and people are spending a lot of money on it. Well, if you think about it, there's a huge amount of, of uh, value locked up in your GIS database, and most data, um, I've been challenged by some, by the chief data officer of the city of Los Angeles, she told me that all data has a spatial component. And so there's huge value locked up in your GIS, so what we should be talking about <clears throat> is maybe a subset of BI <clears throat> or LI, location intelligence. And that's the process of deriving, deriving meaningful insight from geospatial data relationships to solve a particular problem. So using spatial analysis to make better decisions, right? And insight is what managers and executives really want, and that's what they need. So I don't know if everybody understands this, but way back in the 60s when Roger Tomlinson invented the first GIS, they did it to perform spatial analysis. They did not create it to make maps or edit data, though it can do that. So I want to, you know, try to get everybody involved here today, and I want everybody to repeat after me. GIS was created to perform spatial analysis. Come on. Okay, and so most of us got into this cool field because of the cool spatial analysis we saw and we did in classes, whether they be in college or wherever, right? But something happens and we get our job and then we don't do any spatial analysis anymore. Right, and the reason is, is because the people that you work with think you make maps, right? So they don't know what Krieging and Thiessen polygons and least distance weighted ratios are and all that other kind of cool stuff that GIS can do. So you have got to be a salesperson. You have got to educate them and say, I don't just make maps. I can do these cool analyses and I can really bring insight that no other technology can and really help you make better decisions. And you can break down spatial analysis into these six categories, right? Understanding where, just putting things on a map is valuable measuring size, shape, and distribution. So we can look at the size, shape, and distribution of wetlands across the state of North Carolina. We can determine how places are related, look at two different places and see why they, they're the same or different. We can find the best locations and paths. So a real elementary you know, example is find a place to put a new fire station, right? Have all your fire stations. They usually need to meet their 
calls, you know, in 10 minutes, we run a 10 minute drive time around each fire station. We see where the hole is and that's where we put the new fire station and then paths, you know, find me the, the next path to get from my hotel to here. But not only for that, but let's say I have 50 inspections that need to be done today and I've got three teams show me the most efficient routing for those teams so they can meet their um, get the most done today. Okay. Right now that is, I guarantee you there's people in your organization that are making route decisions based on paper maps or up here right? That is low hanging fruit. That's an easy ROI for you to find people that are routing people every day. Use most efficient routing in your GIS and provide some ROI right there. Detecting and quantifying patterns, looking at patterns. A lot of this is done with crime. Um, and then making predictions is one of the most valuable ones, right? We can look at certain rain fall. And then if we've got the right uh, flood bases showed up, we can, we can predict what areas of the city are going to flood based on a certain rainfall. Very valuable stuff. So this is the stuff you should be doing. We, we spend a lot of time managing data and, and money. We should spend the same amount of time or more analyzing it and getting good information out there. So educate your folks on all these things that can be done and look for opportunities to use them. By the way, you don't need to take any photos because I'll send this presentation out to whoever wants it, okay? So I found this really cool presentation on the web. And what, what's interesting is the same issues I'm seeing with my customers, that they're not getting full utilization of their software. Other people are seeing with their software. So this came from a gentleman named Benjamin Yallen, and he works with uh, SharePoint for Microsoft uh, Consulting. And he put this pr presentation together for his customers to tell them to stop updating and to start evolving and really utilizing the full breadth of the software. And so I stole a bunch of my, my presentation today from him, but I adapted it for GIS, um, and, I, and I just changed some of the images, but I'm giving him credit here, okay? Um, so he talked about we're stuck in a routine, right? A new version comes out of GIS, maybe you wait a little while till the point one version comes out because you're nervous about the point oh version, and then you upgrade, right? And then the point two version comes out and you upgrade like that and point three, right? Well, there's a lot of money that goes into R&D, right? I can tell you from Esri's standpoint, now we spend more on R&D as a percentage of our revenue than any major IT company, like double, okay? So like we spend over 25% of our revenue on R&D, right? Google, Microsoft, Apple, you're lucky if they're doing 12%, okay? So that's a quarter of a billion dollars last year we spent on R&D. So the new stuff that comes out has a bunch of new stuff in it, but people don't find out what that new stuff is and, and use it, right? They just upgrade to the latest version and keep going and don't change. So. We want to help you tra transform because you need to transform with the software and, and use it to its full extent, right? And if we go back to the Swiss Army knife of all the different things that GIS can do, this is the blades and tools in your Swiss Army knife, right? We can do spatial analysis. We can deploy apps. There's all kinds of valuable content out there. Real-time GIS, big growing area right now. If you're not doing real-time GIS, your executives um, and managers want to see data in real time so they can make faster, better decisions. So I suggest you look into that. We can work with big data. Mapping and visualization is pretty much default. We can do imagery and remote sensing. 3D is also exploding. Um, we've got some automated tools now that will allow you, if you've got pretty good LIDAR, to extract every building and tree in an entire city or county in an automated fashion. So there's really no reason for everybody not to implement 3D unless you don't have LIDAR data. We can work with CAD data. We can do data, data management. There's a new term for a, a thing that's been going on for a long time, but it's called geodesign, where people are planning, um, making changes, and then iteratively modeling it in the real world, in the 3D digital world, real world, so they can see the effects and then tweak the, the plan and then see how it works. So that's a lot of planning work that, and economic development with geodesign. And then we can engage the community to get feedback. And this is another big growing area that uh, agencies want to do. So these are your tools. Learn how to use them and then market them internally uh, to your to your customers. Now, I don't want to get into a battle about on-premises and the cloud, but I'll tell you that every organization in the globe is using the cloud right now, and you all have personal data in the cloud, and it's just a factor of where IT is going, right? So if you're not using the cloud, then you should be using the cloud, and if it wasn't secure, people wouldn't do it. Sure, there's going to be breakthroughs like there always are, but I guarantee you that some of the cloud stuff that's out there is probably safer and better protected than your on-premises stuff. So I've seen that with customers. Um, so I'm not going to go there, but the cloud brings a lot to the table. So it's all about providing different services and different experiences. We need, need to get away from being known as the map makers. We need to deploy apps like this. 
if I'm a manager and executive and I can look at a dashboard on my desk all day long and see exactly what's happening throughout the day and I can make instant decisions before my boss calls and reams me out for a problem, I can already say, yeah, I saw it and we're on it. Right. So this is what executives want to see. And this is a GIS dashboard that you can configure in minutes and deploy. So if I was a GIS manager, the number one app on the, my list to do would be to deploy operational dashboards because it brings value to executives and managers. And if you get them hooked on GIS and understanding the value beyond the map, do you think you'll have problem getting more resources for more staff and hardware and software and conferences and training? No, because your budget will go up because you're raising the, the you're elevating the value of GIS in your organization to more of that location intelligence. So you want to give people what they want, when they want, where they want right away. Everybody's got a cell phone these days. Everybody works on it, whether we want to or not. We work 24-7, 365. Your GIS better be accessible on the phone. If it's not, people aren't going to use it. So you need to make sure that that's possible. You need to use groups to enable staff to collaborate. Everybody needs to collaborate in their job. Nobody does their job all by themselves. And they're looking for ways to collaborate. Digital maps and ops dashboards like you saw and other tools like that are great ways to collaborate. And if you give people these tools and allow them to collaborate better, they're going to be your friends. And again, see the value above and beyond um, just making the maps. And WebGIS actually can transform organizations. I have seen this. Most organizations are organized like the one on the left. They're hierarchical. Um, the management needs something that or, that that um, that need trickles down. Somebody at the bottom does it, and then it trickles back up. It's very slow. It's inefficient. People want to work like the one on the right. They just want to pick up their device, open an app, make a few clicks, and get the answer and move on about their day. They don't want to have to email somebody or call somebody or go visit somebody in office, request something, and then wait for it, right? So web GIS and the instant availability on any device really enables people to work the way they want to on the right. And it actually can transform the way an organization works. And we do this through using easy to use focused apps that are mobile and ready to go. Again, in the past, when GIS first came to the web, it looked just like desktop GIS, right? It had all these toolbars on it and all these layers on it. You had to turn the layers on and off and zoom in and out with your tools, right? But that's all we knew, and that was cool because we could do that on the web all of a sudden. But now we have these devices here, and I know if you're like me and you download an app, you don't like take a class on how to use that app, right, or read a user manual, right? It's like if I can't figure out how to use it in about 30 seconds, then I'm just deleting the app or never going to use it, right? Well, that's those expectations are now for GIS. So you've got to deploy very easy-to-use apps that work on any device. So the goal is to really give everybody alternatives but keep them in a known, controlled, and secure environment while using the latest and most authoritative data. So we want to enable other people to get access to these tools and data um, in a secure environment, but again, on any device in the way they want to do it. We want to help business get the work done, right? If we help people do their business better um, and meet their goals and get rid of their challenges, again, you're going to raise your value in the organization. Well, again, we want to give them choices. We want them to open the same app on their phone, their tablet, their desktop, what have you. So it's time for us to wake up and it's time for us to transform. And so what I'd like to do now is to share some success stories of uh, customers, some of these I've worked with, um, that are actually doing this. So I've got a good um, collection here. I've got Walgreens. I've got the city of Rancho Cucamonga, California. I've got Charlotte Water, who's my account. Hartsfield Jackson, Atlanta International Airport, that's my account, City of LA, and a government in uh, organization in South Australia. So the first one I'd like to go over is Walgreens. I'm going to show a video about Walgreens and, and how they utilize GIS. It's pretty interesting from a, a commercial perspective. My name is Jillian Elder. I'm the director of our enterprise location intelligence team at Walgreens. Our Enterprise Location Intelligence Group is well placed right in our corporate strategy organization. What this means is that we're well positioned in order to service a bunch of the divisions throughout the company. So we end up partnering with divisions across the entire company to improve upon the information that's going into their decisions. Understanding our customers, where they live, where they work, why they're shopping us is the core of what we do and that's in many ways a spatial question. Our work and our, and our spatial analysis and our mapping technology is, is centered around serving customers. 
Walgreens has started an initiative to offer flu shots at nearly every location. And with a, a network of 8,000 stores, we really have the ability to identify sales trends of products that are relating to flu. And with that, a flu index was created. Now the way we get this data is we use our prescriptions for antiviral medications. And that for us is our best indicator of flu activity because generally speaking when someone has a positive flu test, uh, they are getting prescribed an antiviral to help treat it. When we combine that in with our mapping applications, we were able to, before the CDC could report on it, understand where flu was happening throughout the country. It was very important for us to have a simple mapping platform that would illustrate what we were showing in the flu index each week. What the CDC does is their data is reported on a two-week lag, whereas inside of a week we're able to turn around data. So I think that you know, that really helped us in terms of the credibility of the flu index because ours was, was closer to real time and, and I think that was very important. What we've been able to do is show people how important having that spatial lens on our information and on our analytics is. Walgreens is a 24-hour company. That means we need to be able to provide data on any device, at any time, anywhere. So many of the important decisions that we make within our company are based on location. Where stores are going to be, how we want to merchandise those stores in terms of the items we want to have in those stores, and all of that is, is really driven by the WallMap tool that we have. WallMap allows us to provide spatial solutions to people that aren't experts in GIS. So we were able to deploy solutions that are, are much more user-friendly and easy to learn. We made it broad-based so all of our data is there and very easy to turn layers on and off and to have some basic dashboarding so that anybody here at the company can consume Walgreens information in a map format. Mergers and Acquisitions uses WallMap on a daily basis. Each of our managers are responsible for territories across the country and they use WallMap to identify competitor locations. We look at distances, we look at population of certain Walgreens trade areas, we look at demographic information and how that could play into the business retention that we expect when we purchase pharmacies. For our users that go out into the field, we needed WallMap Pro Mobile and what that really does is allow people to use any sort of mobile device when they're out in the field so that they can look at data about our stores right there. Now we can actually have a tablet that follows us as you go, the map pans as you move, and I can go ahead and take inked notes against an aerial background, against a map background, against a market share background, uh, against our stores over the top of our competitors right there out in the field. What's amazing about the GIS platform is not just all the data that it can aggregate, uh, but its ability to display that to make it easier for executives to understand what's going on and make the right strategic choice for the company. At the core of how people behave is geography. And strategically having a geocentric approach and thinking locationally and geographically is huge. If you're not, you're missing something. Okay, now that was incredibly powerful. Did anybody catch Jillian Elder's title in that video? Any hands? Her title is Director of Enterprise Location Intelligence. She used to be the GIS manager. She's not anymore. She has elevated GIS to an enterprise system that is used by everybody in the company, including all the executives, to make major decisions. You, you heard them talking about the value of GIS. So she's elevated all her staff as well, right? I met Julian. I got, I got Jillian. I got her to speak at the GIS Manager Summit out at our user conference in San Diego. She's an amazing person, and she's my hero because she's done the ultimate, which is elevate GIS to an incredible level in an organization. I mean, it makes me want to run out and buy Walgreens stock, right? I mean, they are one of the leading pharmacies in the world. They've been around for over 100 years, and you can see how they're embracing the technology. This is the kind of thing. She's a saleswoman. She has pitched them on the value that GIS brings as location intelligence, right? All right, so there's another gentleman that I met at the user conference, Gary McGuire from DCSI, which is a state agency equivalent to a state or province in Australia. Um, and I gave a presentation similar to this, and he came up to me afterwards, and he said, well, I do all those things. And I said, I don't believe it, because nobody's doing all the things I talked about. And he said, no, really, I do. And so he showed me, and sure enough, he is. He's a rock star as well. He's wrote, written a great article on um, the strategic potential of GIS. You could look that up. Um, anyway, he distilled, this is his strategic plan for GIS. And most, a lot of organizations don't even have a strategic plan. 
But Gary's is very simple, and it's these four things. He's there to coordinate, which is facilitating collaboration. He's there to simplify. He wants to improve business practices. He's there to innovate. He wants to create smarter service offerings. And he's there to enable. He wants to inform the decision makers. I mean, that is beautiful. It's simple. It's to the point, And it brings value to the organization of what GIS can do. So another one of my customers is Charlotte Water. They're one of the best um, municipal water um, agencies I've seen using GIS as a platform. And Rob Bailey, who runs their GIS, is a great guy. Great, again, another like Gary and, and Jillian, he gets it. He's able to sell the value to executives and do a lot. Well, this is their map room before their GIS present implementation. And so when there was a problem, the whole city was gridded out. And so they would find what grid that problem was in. And then they'd come in here and they'd go to the cubby hole that was labeled that grid. And they'd pull out all the paper maps and they'd open them up and try to find out what they were looking for. Right. And then they converted all everything to GIS. And then Rob's done a bunch of great stuff. They're doing really cool stuff. Right. But here's a benefit. I bet you never thought about GIS because now they no longer need the map room. So you know what their map room looks like today? It's a fitness center. All right. So that's a cool benefit of GIS that you might not have ever thought about. This next one is I'm going to show you a quick video. This is two years ago at, at our user conference. This is my customer, uh, Atlanta Airport. Great, great guys. Very sharp. Um, done a great job. And um, they did a great presentation. At Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, operational efficiency, customer service, and safety is our top priority. WebGIS has transformed our team from map makers to solution providers, allowing us to be agile, responsive, meeting the needs of a 24-7 workforce. Let's go on a behind-the-scenes tour of our airport. Our day starts with the GIS team replicating data on premise, and in the cloud, ensuring business continuity. Using ArcGIS Online, we deliver focused solutions such as the Maintenance Viewer. Our maintenance team wanted an app that gives them access to the entire range of maintenance-specific GIS data, such as airfield movement areas, utilities, and airfield lights. We use Web App Builder to configure this app to ensure a safe and efficient mobile workforce. Let's start our tour, meet our GIS users, and see where they work. That was this is up to. Up uh, one, we are ready for the two seven left closure. We join two seven left close this time. Thank you much. Every morning, the airside operations team uses a safety critical app for their runway inspections. They're looking for any problems with the pavement, signage, lighting, or airfield markings. Collector for ArcGIS allows Jose, Phil, and the rest of the Airside Ops team to take this mobile app into the field to capture any runway problems. They share that data in real time across other GIS apps. To get real time status, we also developed a dashboard that summarizes the problems and discrepancies by type by location, and by priority. Next, you might think that cutting grass isn't such a big deal, but try doing this safely with a thousand airplanes in your backyard. It actually takes a week to mow all the grass on the airfield, and the FAA actually inspects it. Jerome, our maintenance supervisor, uses Explore for ArcGIS to monitor and manage the grass cutting operations. We work with him to understand his requirements, and we quickly configured a web map to use on his tablet. We have over 42 million square feet of airfield pavement. The management of pavement quality is an ongoing process. This app enables, enables the pavement management engineering staff to better track, analyze, and budget for repair or replacement of concrete slabs. Our team provides GPS-based, high-accuracy field data collection tools Using Collector with a survey grade device, such as the Leica Xeno 20, we are able to bring our high accuracy workflows completely into ArcGIS Online. 
Anthony, our GIS analyst, will continue our behind the scenes tour. Wildlife encroachment on the airfield is a serious concern. Jeff and Airside Ops uses ArcGIS Online to see the concentration of wildlife strikes. By adding the locations of our mobile bird cannons, which we use to scare away the animals, we're able to improve safety. Early one morning, our deputy general manager noticed a lot of our street lights were out. We configured a collector app for Rick and the Landside Ops team, and they're working with maintenance to address the issue. They discovered that someone was actually still in the copper wire. We now know the extent of the problem and how to resolve it. Chief Cole, our fire inspector, is responsible for the inspection of over 7 million square feet. With limited staff, he wanted to prioritize the areas to be inspected. He was using a spreadsheet and wanted a map, but we gave him a web map and he was using it the next day. Our web GIS isn't just for airport staff, it's also for contractors. To increase customer satisfaction, we had contractors install free Wi-Fi and iBeacons. We shared our floor plans in ArcGIS Online so they could accurately place the access points. They were blown away by how fast we were able to provide our data on their mobile devices. To help passengers navigate the airport, we're also working with GIS Inc. to develop interior wayfinding and routing. This dashboard provides metrics, and as participation increases, we'll be able to analyze traffic and flow patterns. Back to you, David. And the beauty of our web apps, we didn't have to write a single line of code. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there because it goes into some desktop stuff. But did you hear what David said at the very beginning of there? He said, WebGIS has transformed us from map makers into solution providers. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. And you saw how, first of all, they deployed all these apps. They haven't written one line of code. You don't have to write, write code to deploy apps. Um, they also saw that the, the fire chief came in there and he asked for a map. And they said, no, we're not giving you a map. We're going to give you a web app and a tablet instead. And then with the Wi-Fi beacons, they actually had the contractors, they heard the contractors were going to use paper and a spreadsheet to track where they were putting on all the beacons. So they heard about this, stepped in and said, no, they're not. We're going to give them an app and we're going to give them digital data and they'll be able to grab the location and take a photo of where they're at and do that. And so they, they're, they, they're salespeople. They look for opportunities. They're agents of change. They are changing the way this organization works by proactively telling their customers what else they can do and looking for ways to increase that. Really great, great example. Got another example here. Um, this is the city of Rancho Cucamonga, California. Um, there's a video here. Maybe I'll show a little bit of it. I'm running a little bit out of time, but they won an award um, three years ago. And this is incredible because the gentleman on the right, well, Ingrid Bruce is the GIS manager in the middle, and, and she's done a great job. But the gentleman on the right is the city manager, and he actually does the demonstration and talks about the value of GIS and how the city can't run without it and how every single staff member gets to work every day looking for new ways to use GIS. I mean, Ingrid, again, like Jillian and David, are, are heroes because they've elevated GIS to an, a level with executives who understand the value and look, look for ways to exploit it above and beyond just making maps. So next, I'd like to talk about LA. Um, they debuted last year uh, a new app or a site called the GeoHub. And this is pretty interesting, and I think this might be the ultimate use of GIS, especially at a local government. And the way this project came around, this was not a GIS project. This wasn't an IT project. This was an initiative from the mayor. What happened was the mayor got elected and then he wants to make, of course, L.A. the best city on the planet. So he's made a bunch of promises and initiatives that he wants to get done. And he was looking for a platform that he could use to get all the staff at the city, all the staff at the county, all of the citizens, the businesses, the academic areas, everybody working together on the same page to help make L.A. be the best. And they figured out that GIS was the best way to do that. And they created the LA Geo Hub. So if you Google LA Geo Hub and go there, um, you'll be able to walk through the site. Now, it's more than just an open data site. Um, you'll see some apps in there. So one of the things that the mayor promised was that he didn't like the quality of the pavement on the streets in LA. And so he promised that they were going to pave 2,400 lane miles of, of streets while he was in office. So they have an app that you can go to and you can see the progress of how far along they are. 
right? Then he also wanted to clean up the streets. So they've got a story map in there that shows they actually drove every single street in L.A. and they classified it based on how clean or dirty it was. And then they're prioritizing the cleanup. The third one is a great app called Streetwise that I think every single city and county in America should have. And it shows every single project that the city is going to do this year and then over the next coming years. And the reason this app came together is because they were doing some utility work and they had to tear up a piece of a segment of street. And the day that they started that project, that segment of street was right in front of a school. And what day do you think they picked to start to rip that up? The first day of school, right? Well, everybody here knows the traffic involved with the first day of school, right? Well, it wreaked havoc and everybody called the mayor's office and he was not happy. And he's like, are you kidding me? Anybody can look at the map and figure out that it was right in front of a school. We could have done that work anytime over the summer. We could have done it any other time. I want an app that shows every single project in this city from every department on an app that's easy to use, both externally. That way all departments can see when other departments are tearing up the same street and they don't have to rip it up multiple times. The public can see it. You can query it for the future and see where things are. Great app um, and, again, configurable. So check out the LA Geo Hub. Again, an executive initiative, not a GIS or IT project, but really the ultimate value that GIS can bring as a collaboration platform. And again, allowing people to make better decisions. So you heard about Jillian Elder being the director of enterprise location intelligence. Uh, my friend Gary in Australia, he's also director of business and location intelligence. So my question here, and it doesn't need to be answered here, I think it's just something we need to think about, is do we need to rebrand GIS as location intelligence? Because too many people hear GIS and think MAP, those are the people that make the maps. So I don't know because GIS has a great long life and a, and, a, and a great meaning behind it. And I'm a GIS professional and I don't think we need to get rid of GIS, but I think maybe we need to embrace location intelligence. And if your organization, again, has a BI initiative, get involved and show them that GIS can be location intelligence and be involved in that. The other thing is, is if you're going to, you know, raise the value of GIS in an organization and serve an entire enterprise and executives in 24-7, 365, you can't be running on one server, okay? You've got to elevate your infrastructure. One of my customers in Florida, Pinellas County, Florida, they embrace GIS and view it as enterprise system. This is their GIS arch architecture. There are 53 servers here, okay? They they're have a population of about a million, but they've invested a lot in this, obviously, but they get the return on investment from it because they, they let leverage it as if it was email or financials or ERP or any other enterprise system. It was designed based on best practices and it meets all their needs and moves on. So if you're going to look to elevate the level of GIS in your organization, you better look to elevate the level of infrastructure you've got supporting it because the last thing you want to do is get a bunch of executives using it and then it doesn't work. It's slow or it doesn't work right or falls down. So I'm not the only person talking about this. I found this article online back in 2011, um, and it said generally people outside of GIS think of GIS just as maps or graphic product or the younger brother of CAD. Right? That's insulting. <laughs> right? I mean, CAD is great. It's very valuable. GIS could never replace it. It has its place, engineering and design and all that. But are you kidding me? Younger brother of CAD? They're looking at us like we're Corel Draw or something, you know? Come on. So they talk about five ways to do this. They say promote the system, get an annual health checkup, use a best of breed approach, consider the cloud, and set GIS up as the central hub. That's what LA just did, right? That was back in 2011. It's another great article I ran across. This was in 2015, talking about using GIS to determine the potential cause for cancer. In here was this great quote, or not so great quote, quote, GIS is often seen as maps or a visual graphics product, and the more advanced capabilities are ignored because they remain unknown to key departments and decision makers. They don't know what you can do for them. You've got to talk to them and educate them and sell them on the value that you can bring. We've got a great set of blog posts um, and a managing GIS series that deals with a lot of these issues. Um, there's a, a friend of mine, Wade Kloos. Um, he's the GIS manager at Utah DNR. I got him to present multiple times at the GIS Manager Summit. He did this presentation. Don't just make maps, create spatially enabled addictions. I mean, he, he, he really goes, talks about getting executives addicted to this stuff so that they want and need more of it. And then there's a great um, 
guy, Matt Sheehan, who works at WebMap Solutions, and he put out, he puts out a great blog post, but he had this one, you know, RGIS emphasis should be business outcomes, not maps. And he talks about your elevator pitch. You know, when you're in an elevator and you have two minutes to explain to somebody what you do for a living, you know, you probably just say, oh, I make maps, right? But what about saying, you know, I help people make better decisions by getting them to understand the power of location, right? Just by changing your elevator pitch, you can change the view that people have of GIS, right? Um, and I like this blog post on LinkedIn, WebGIS is no longer optional, unlike your IT department, right? Now, I have a lot of customers that go to the web, and the first reason they do, or the cloud, the reason they do to go to the cloud is to get around their IT staff, right? Because they don't want to have to wait two years to get a new server, right? <clears throat> the other thing is, is you know, I know there's got a lot of ta talented people out there that can write code, and that's great, and I don't think you can get away with running an enterprise GIS without writing code, but you shouldn't write code just because you can. You should only write code if you absolutely have to and it meets a business need and you've done a total cost of ownership analysis and you've got the resources to support it and migrate it and so forth. So Pinellas County, which I talked about, you saw their infrastructure. The other interesting thing they have there, they have a couple of things written into their governance. They have a steering committee made up of executives and managers from the departments. First of all, that executive crew, they set the priority of all the GIS projects because they prioritize them on what makes sense for the business of the county. So that way things get done in a proper order. The other thing they do is if you want a custom app, you have to go in front of them and prove why. And you have to prove that you have done a total cost of ownership analysis and you have the money to support it and migrate it and so forth. And if they don't like your, your argument, they want to prove it and you can't have your custom app. Making a custom app should be a business decision, not just because, oh, I can do that and uh, I think it'd be fun, right? So um, the other thing that they do is they have no GIS project will take over three months. Because if it takes over three months, it's probably got too much going on with it, and we want to deploy things quickly because technology is changing so fast. So commercial off-the-shelf or COTS versus custom, lots of different um, advantages, um, cost of development and deployment, whether or not you cover 100% of your customer needs, or and getting your time to deployment. So people don't have to have an, an application that does 100% of their needs, right? You don't have to. If you try to do 100% on every app, you're going to go custom every time, right? Okay, so it's time to seize the opportunity that's in front of you. GIS is very, very powerful. You guys are very, very sharp people. You've got incredible data and tools available to you. It's just a matter that nobody knows what you can bring to help the organization out. So what I'm telling you is to get in front of executives, look for opportunities to deploy applications, do as much spatial analysis as you can because there's no other technology that can do it, and that's the ultimate ROI is doing spatial analysis and re revealing insight that that people aren't aware of right with that that's all i've got again i'll pr provide a uh, copy of this presentation it'll have a link to the videos and some of the articles i showed um and i'll be happy to take any questions not at all huh okay well thanks very much